A salary is the drug they give you when they want you to forget about your dreams. Welcome to the Corporate Dropout Podcast. I'm your host, Alessia Citro. After a successful career in tech, suffering from burnout, stress, and anxiety, I walked away from a multiple six-figure career to chase my passions and purpose as a coach and entrepreneur. This show is going to inspire, equip, and empower you to do the same. Let's get it. As a former Salesforce employee, I can tell you with confidence that every successful business uses a CRM tool. Why should yours be any different? Whether you're an entrepreneur, network marketer, or realtor, you need a way to keep track of your outreach to team members, prospects, and customers. Enter the 90-Day Habits Journal. Created by top network marketing leaders, the 90-Day Cycle to New Habits Journal is a great way to cultivate a winning mindset each day and track your activity. What you track grows, so start tracking what matters in your life and business. Get your copy at 90dayhabits.co and use code CITRO, that's C-I-T-R-O, for 10% off. Hello, friends. Welcome back to the Corporate Dropout Podcast. Today, I have the privilege of interviewing Savannah Joy and Amanda Maurice. Here is a little bit about them before we kick off. So they are embodied feminine leadership coaches and the co-founders of Embrace Your Wild. I love that name so much. Good job, guys. (laughs) They each traversed the journey of corporate dropout to heart-centered business owners, realized they wanted to create community and holistic programs that helped women heal themselves and unleash their authenticity and full power. And so through embodiment, spirituality, and self-acceptance work, Embrace Your Wild empowers feminine leaders to unlock and embody their next level of unbridled authentic expression and their version of wild in their relationships and purpose-driven work. So with that, thank you, Amanda and Savannah, for being here. I'm so excited for this interview. Is it bad that you get inspired by your own bio? I was like listening to your no, read that. I was like, yeah, on. damn. That As I was reading good. it, I was like, I need to sit down and look at my messaging a little bit more because this is this is lit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Writing a bio Thank is you. really difficult. So it really is. Well and okay, so that might be like a good place to start. So I love the fact that you are helping women step back into their feminine power and energy because we in Western civilization are so obsessed with masculinity. I know. And I feel like a big part of that is to begin receiving instead of just giving all the time. Has it been like reading that back to you now and you're feeling moved by it, like even receiving that, is that something that before you started this journey, you would have been able to do without saying like, oh, you know, it's no biggie, like in downplaying it. Tell me a little bit about your journey to receiving. Oh my, a little bit about our journey to receiving. (laughs) I know that's a loaded question. (laughs) But you're so on point. Should we do like a season on your podcast? (laughs) (laughs) We could do a season just for that. I kind of feel like we should. And lately, I'm having a lot of guests that are very much in this space of feminine empowerment. And this is the type of thing that keeps coming up. So yeah, we might need to do like a series on this for sure. So here for it. Yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> it's a receiving is a journey unto itself. Before we started this, would I have been able to receive any of that? Absolutely not. God's honest truth. Like, I I could not receive a compliment that I was like my, that I had a nice smile or that my hair looked nice. Or if somebody complimented my shoes, I was really quick to be like, Oh, I got them on sale. Like I would just, it was weird. I wouldn't necessarily reject the observation, but I would shift it. And it's taken a while to get to the point that I am now, you know, stumbling along the way, but man, does it feel good. It feels good to receive. Yes. Yeah. Once you get past that discomfort. What about you, Savannah? What's it been like for you? Oh my God. It's it's so cool because like of course you brought this up. Of course you're like you're going into like this receiving place. So we were totally talking about this yesterday. And in Embrace Your Wild and in our programs and our retreats and just overall, like we talk so much about increasing our capacity to receive. And an easy place to look is receiving compliments or hearing hearing someone talk about you without uh, deflecting um, or minimizing or, or whatever, making excuses of why it's not quite true. Um, But 
we were talking yesterday about how there's these different access points to kind of see like, where am I on the spectrum of receiving? And like, where can I increase my capacity to receive? Um, And Amanda has this like really amazing practice of making it super small and super tangible of like, like the first sip of your whatever your morning drink is. And like the thing that you look forward to the most in the morning, whether that's your coffee or your Starbucks latte or your matcha latte, whatever. But like before you take the sip, knowing it's going to be so delicious, intention intentionally like pausing and being like, I can receive this and using that as an affirmation and a mantra. And you can use that with literally anything, but uh, opening up that space and saying, I can receive this um, has been like one of the biggest game changers because it can be something super small, like your morning drink, but it can also be like if your partner randomly gives you like a huge gift or wants to do something super nice for you. And if your initial reaction is to reject or to be like, oh my God, that's too much. I can't, I can't possibly stop. Remind yourself, I can receive this. And that's, that's been a huge game changer for us. And that, yeah, I just, I love that you're totally yeah. bringing up and this. That- that muscle, which is really what Savannah is talking about, that receiving muscle, you know, there are, we all have big things that we are waiting to receive, right? Maybe it's a, maybe it's a promotion. Maybe it's your dream. Maybe it's that house, that ring, that wedding, whatever. And sometimes the bigger things are harder to receive than the smaller things. But if we start practicing receiving in a place where we feel safe and we know what's going to happen, which is the thing that creates the safety, then by the time the bigger things show up, you have a muscle that's used to being used. You have a different knee-jerk reaction. So when I started with my London Fog, knowing that it was going to be delicious and pausing for that split second before the the, the cup touches my lips... I know I'm going to be able to receive it. I know it tastes bloody delicious. That has been a game changer to receiving much bigger things, clients, business, opportunities, podcast interviews, the things that felt so scary before I don't feel that big. Oh my gosh. So this whole conversation around receiving is so interesting. And one of the things, well, there were a couple that I picked up on. One was by enhancing this capacity, like even the example you give Amanda of enjoying the London fog, like anticipating how good that sip is. Do you feel like this practice is also enabling you to be more present in your day to day? A hundred percent. By And it's sort of by default. I did not, I didn't arrive here searching for presence, but it's definitely a byproduct of learning to receive more expanding that capacity. And that drops you right into the realm of pleasure, right? Like, yeah, totally. Like this, this idea of, of receiving and uh, increasing your capacity to receive by default definitely brings you into the present moment because you're, you're checking in with yourself and you're being intentional. And, and with that comes uh, pleasure as well. And it's like being in touch with the sensations in your body and what what is here for you and this this increasing your capacity to receive. When we are receiving and wanting to receive something, we actually are experiencing what pleasure feels like. Which underpinning all of this is, can you allow yourself to want what you want? Where your feet are planted, is it okay for you to want what you want? Yeah. So a follow up to this, I interviewed, I feel like I bring this episode up a lot because it was just so powerful. So episode 17 and 18, we have a a mini business tip from her as well. But I interviewed Dr. Valerie Rain, who discovered patriarchy stress disorder. She was this high achieving woman that like completely burned out. Um, Her story is amazing. I won't give all of it away here because people can go listen to the episode. But one of the things that she teaches is the fact that it has not been safe for women to feel pleasure or desire. And we talk a lot about capacity uh, with her too. I'm part of her coaching cohort. And one of the things with the capacity that I'm kind of curious about is I've been doing this work for the last eight months or so. Do you feel like women purposely have been conditioned to be so damn busy all the time in a giving state so that they're cut off from receiving, cut off from being present, cut off from the pleasure. I'm a little bit of a conspiracy theorist with that maybe, but what are your thoughts? (laughs) 
Damn. Um, I've never thought, I mean, I recognize the reality in that picture that you just painted. I recognize my own reality in that. And I've never thought of it being a malevolent um, premeditated structure, but it could have been. That's kind of a low vibe thought, I suppose. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> it's, but, well, and, yeah, yes, my vibe. yes, and there's realities out there that we sometimes don't talk about because we don't want to go low vibe. You can go low vibe if you have the structures you need to bring you back up yeah. to neutral or high. And some of the stuff we really need to talk about. It, it's making me think of this this bigger concept of of just disempowerment, of just how often we give our power away. And I'm sure there's been patriarchal structures that have made that really common. And it, I don't know, there's just something about uh, being aware of it and then, and seeing it and then taking your power back intentionally, because there's, it, it's just so fucking normal for us to give our power away. Actually, one of the things I've been revisiting, uh, have you all heard of Amy Cuddy? She did a TED Talk almost 10 years ago on the power of body language and power posing specifically. Well, she basically talks about how nonverbal communication is how like whatever your body language is determines how people feel about you and what they think about you, but it can also inform that about yourself. Mm -hmm. So one of the things she talks about is rather than being in like a hunched over powerless state, you expand, you know, you do like the Wonder Woman or like a star pose or um, like hands behind your head. Yes. Kick your feet back on the desk, all of that. Right. And so I learned about this pretty early into my sales career. Back then, nothing was on webcam. It was all phone. I used to kick my feet up and I, I'm not even kidding you. The close rate when I was at that point, this was a very transactional sales role I was in. It would go up when I had the feet kicked back. And to this day, well, not anymore because I'm a dropout now. But when I would go into any interview, I would go to the bathroom before, stand in the stall for two minutes in the Wonder Woman pose. And you just go in there like with, you know, like awesome energy, right? And ready to drop the mic. So I think finding ways to take your power back and feel powerful again are really key. Are there any practices that you two do to embody that power again when you're feeling like maybe you don't quite have it? Yeah. I mean, this is totally that like we, we call it the leader within, or it could be your highest wise self, whatever the goddess within you. Um, But we absolutely bring this embodiment into into our coaching, into our programs, our retreats. Um, because exactly what you said, when you tap into those different body postures or holding patterns, you act you activate different energies inside of yourself. If your normal holding pattern is to is to be hunched over and small and take up as little space as possible, of course you're gonna feel that way, right? But you can actually like trick your nervous system or trick your brain into feeling a different way if you change uh, your body posture, your breathing, it's, it's a recipe, right? Like confidence has a recipe of a certain type of breathing, a certain type of, of body posture, as does a lack of confidence or self doubt or anger or sadness. Right. And so if you can change your breathing and change your body posture, you change how you feel. Mm, That's a recipe everyone needs. I'm excited for you to give away all the goods on the mini episode. All right. So let's shift gears a little bit. I want to hear more about your corporate dropout story. So what were you doing before you stepped into this authentic truth and began coaching women? I want to hear what it was like transitioning out. uh, And then, yeah, anything else that you think is helpful to share as you make a transition like that? Yes. Corporate dropout. Absolutely. Raise my hand. Guilty as charged. Happily guilty as charged, actually. I was so miserable. I was working in recruitment and was good in my role. The clients were happy. The people I was placing in the roles were happy. I was making the company money and I was bored. I was demotivated and I felt like, well, there's, I always had two parts. I'm like, I I did recruitment for a couple different places because 
I would get bored, right? But like, yeah, the good that makes you bored. It's just like there was no no rubber met the road for me there. And once I felt like I had learned how to play the game, I checked out. You know, that's the three to six month window of a learning curve in any role. And once I kind of like automated my job, I just couldn't get myself to pay attention again. And I also realized that the role I was in, the job that I was doing, the people I was working for, like basically the agenda that I was tasked to push did not align with my true core values. And once I saw that, I couldn't unsee it. And there was a, it was like a different circle of hell when I would show up at work after recognizing that truth. And the longer I stayed, the more my meanness left like the warmth and the laughter and the humor and like the connectivity that my coworkers felt for me just started to drain. And then it started to drain through my friendships and my personal relationships. And then I was just a walking zombie. And that was past the point that I should have left. And you don't know what you don't know. And you got to go through the darkness to realize the best way to take care of yourself sometimes. I couldn't agree more with that. I'm so grateful for the really awful like pits because it makes you appreciate the peaks so much more. So how did you end up being able to leave? Because I know there's so many people that are listening to this, especially right now. Like so many people are leaving their jobs and not even finding new ones because they just can't take it anymore. How did you end up making that jump off of the cliff? I, I found a way to give myself a to give myself wings on the way down, I left that job to work for Lululemon. And I had, there was an opportunity to work in their talent acquisition department. So I, you know, the, I, I lied. I manipulated my way through that situation to serve myself best. Even three months ago, I wouldn't have been able to own that statement as much as I did. I had a huge shadow around being manipulative and man, just having a moment where I'm grateful for my coach, (laughs) the the heavy lift that she does really appreciate her. Um, Yeah. I manipulated myself or I manipulated the situation to best protect and serve myself as I jumped off the cliff and no one was going to question if I was making a move from a small recruit, a small recruitment firm to a talent acquisition team in a really big company. No one's going to do that. They're going to think that that's my next step up. Good job, Amanda. Go for it. Congrats, girl. You got this, babe. Kill it, right? And before that role was going to come up, they want, you know, Lulu wants people to work in their store. And so I signed up to do a seasonal role and it gave me money. It gave me money and it let me think about coaching on the side. Not really on the side. That's a lie. When you decide you're going to start your own business, you think about it all the time, nonstop, every day. Eat, sleep, drink, drink, your business. So it allowed me to make money while I thought about my business and what I was going to do and how I was going to start honoring my core values. Um, And then the pandemic hit and I didn't have to try to straddle that line for too long. I was lucky in that sense. I didn't have to, I didn't have to pretend, you know, during my shifts that I was something that I wasn't for too long. Yeah. A couple of things I hear in that. So one is I think like the tactical takeaway also is don't just jump off the cliff with no net or like no um, clear prospect of getting the wings on the way down, or you're going to get really hurt and maybe have to sell out or go back into misalignment. So having something that gives you like that cushion, I, I think is really, really crucial And then the other thing I heard is that you felt a bit of shame around becoming that corporate dropout because we've been so programmed to be checking this box that society gives us of like, you need to have a nine to five, you need to, you know, continue getting promoted, climbing the ladder. Like, does that resonate? Is that why you felt like this was a way to sort of like smooth out that, that bump and what people would think? I I think it's maybe like five or 10% that. Definitely, it was a move to smooth out the any kind of resistance that might come my way. I'm not so sure if I was feeling shame as much as I I didn't want to deal with other people's bullshit. I didn't want to deal with other people's projections of what I should be doing. I know my parents want me to have 
a really stable, cushy job on the 25th floor with a window corner office, like, you know, never having to get down and dirty in anything. And I know they want that for me because they love me. And that's not what I want. So I, it was a move that I made to just buffer out the noise of other people's perceptions and fears and insecurities, you know, not a lot of emotional intelligence, emotional awareness work. And when, when you do that work, you come to realize that your unhealed, your wounded parts inside of you, you can end up projecting them on other people and hurting those people in the process. So yeah, I was just trying to, to create this like bubble around me where I didn't have to worry about other people's shit because by golly, <laughs> jumping off that cliff brought all of my shit up and I needed the energy in the space to deal with me. Yeah, uh, that's such a good call out. And I think even when people are, you know, quote unquote, shitting on you, especially if it's, you know, your parents, close friends, it's coming from a well-intentioned place, but it's still not helpful nonetheless. Yeah. 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 I think having that um, energetic boundary is really important. Savannah, what about you? How did you become a corporate dropout and step into your truth? So I was going to say, yeah, Amanda and I both have very creative backgrounds um, in art and music. Um, I I have a degree in photography and was a pro- professional photographer in Vegas for a couple of years doing weddings on the strip. Uh, and I got super burnt out. And um, my ex-husband at the time uh, was pursuing his career of being a pilot and that pays shit for the first few years. And so I was burnt out with photography and I was like, okay, well, I'll just go get like a customer service inside sales job. And it was like the most money that I had ever made, like, you know, after college. And um, I ended up staying there and worked my way into outside sales. And um, I was doing outside sales for six years. Um, and it was so far from my truth. I like, I was so miserable. Like I am such a, like talk about core values. My core values are like freedom, adventure, um, creativity. And it was like, none of it was being honored in, in the job. Like I was totally like the breadwinner, supporting my ex-husband as he was going towards his passion because I didn't know what the fuck I wanted to do. And it was, um, yeah, like seven years uh, working in corporate doing something I hated. And I, f- I felt like I was literally living like this like double agent life. Like I was, I was pretending to be a corporate successful person when I was at my job. And I like, I had to amp myself up every morning. I had to do, I had to have this like extensive morning routine just to feel like I had good enough energy to not like cry at work. It was, it was awful. I I know other people have this experience. And I eventually got to the point where I was like, "I I can't do this forever. Like I can't keep not honoring my soul and my values and my, my, this knowing inside of me that there's, that I want to make a difference in the world. And I know that I have the potential to. And uh, so I started asking those bigger questions. Like what, what is my greatest gift? Like, why am I actually here on this planet at this time? Like, I know it's not to work in corporate selling boxes and tape. (laughs) I know it's not. um, I, I love photography, but I don't want to do photography full time. So it's like just this kind of come to Jesus moment of like, like, what do you really want? And so I I started exploring that and it led me to coaching. And actually, that's where I met Amanda was in coach training. Um, and it got to the point where I finally found the thing that felt so true to me and so aligned. And it lit me up more than anything ever has that as I leaned into that passion and that knowing and my intuition of like, yes, this is what what is for me. The the pain of staying in corporate got so intense that I finally actually made the plan to leave and build my own business. Um, and that whole process just rocked my world. 
I had so many stories I had to overcome. Like I'm flaky. I'm inconsistent. I've never like I've tried to build a side business before. I've, I've just never been committed enough. Like how could I possibly be my own source of full income? And like so many stories and so much fear and other people's voices of what I was capable or not capable of um, all came up as I as I started to plan to leave. Oh, tell, tell the story about how you gave your notice and then they <laughs> changed the goalposts on you. Oh, oh yeah. God. That sounds like something we need to hear. Spill the tea, girl. Yeah. So. Um, it wasn't yeah, your happiest so moment, I'll tell you that. It wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't. I, yeah. Uh, so I made my plan. You know, I was being responsible. I was like, I was saving up money. I was like, okay, I'm going to have at least like four months of expenses in my bank account. Like, this is going to be awesome. Like, I can totally do this. I've been, I've been doing this stuff on the side and building up my clients and my hours and all this stuff. So I'm, I'm making a rough plan to leave. It was, uh, last, last October. I was planning to leave last October. Yeah. Okay. So I was building the coaching business for a while. And then it got to the point where I was like, okay, I'm going to make the leap. So yeah, it was last. Yeah. So it was last summer and I was like, okay, I'm going to give my notice for October 1st. And it was in July. I had had a conversation with my manager a few months earlier and he was, he could feel that I was disengaging and he's like, Hey, I just want to say, you know, like if you ever decide you want to leave, you know, just like just give me a heads up. Just let me know as like as much notice as you can so we can like, you know, replace you or, or whatever happens. And I'm like, oh yeah, of course. Like I'll totally do that. Like, like we had a good relationship. They were kind of like a family run business. And I was like, oh yeah, hundred percent. So in July, I had I like was at work in the morning. I was like in the bathroom, like washing washing my hands, and I had this intuitive knowing like dropped into me. And it was like, you're going to give your notice today. And I was like, excuse me? <laughs> today? What do you mean today? <laughs> like having a conversation with myself. <laughs> yeah, you're going to give your notice today. It's today. Today's the day. And I was like, uh, okay. Um, and I went with it. I, I could feel how true it was. And even though it didn't make logical sense, it was a knowing that I... I couldn't shake it. Like this was the truth for me. And so I was like, okay, well, what's my last day? And it was like, okay, October 1st. So I was literally giving them two and a half months of notice. So I give my manager my resignation letter that effective October 1st, that'd be my last day, blah, blah, blah. I'm here to help train anyone that which, you hire. Which Savannah's missing a point here, which is she calculated October 1st around the income she would be receiving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, okay. Right? I feel like there this was will that piece of like... Detail. <laughs> okay, like I'll have this much runway and yeah, and that yeah. makes me feel safe and that's a safe place for me to make this leap. Yes, exactly. Thank you for that. So I give him my notice and say, this will be my last day knowing like, cool, that will mean I'll have this amount of dollars in my bank account to float the bridge, whatever. And uh, he's like, wow, okay. Okay, great. Um, all right, we'll figure this out. Cool. Within one week, like six days later, he he tells me, Savannah, t today's your last day. You can you can pack your things and leave. <laughs> and I, <laughs> yeah, you can imagine what that felt like. Um, oh my god, I was freaking out. I was freaking out. Like, what did I just do? What am I going to do? I'm a single person. I don't have another. I don't have a partner that I can fall back on their income. Like. I have a really nice condo in an expensive part of, you know, east of Seattle. Like, what the hell am I going to do? Um, luckily, I had a coach at that time and held me through that experience. Um, and really shortly after that, I had the inspiration for Embrace Your Wild. And I texted Amanda and I was like, like, I just had this idea about a program for women called Embrace Your Wild. And it's like a whole life transformation of, uh, you know, radical self-acceptance and sisterhood and like everything you need to like truly like own your power and, and change your life. Um, and I really want to do it with someone. Like, I know I could do it by myself, but I want to do it with someone. Are you in? And she was like, I'm 250% in. 
Now let me go read the rest of your text. (laughs) I was sold on the thesis. I was just like, I'm in. Let's do this. Okay, now let me just go see what I got myself into. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, okay, I love that story. The thing that jumps out to me, which I'm sure now in hindsight, now that you're not in the thick of it anymore, is that the universe dropped in and was like, hey, girl, today's the day. And you did it, but kind of because... (laughs) It was like three months later or two and a half months later that you said you'd be done when it was like, no, like you need to be done now. So yeah. Yeah. So like it happened for you, although I'm sure at the time it was like, wait, what? (laughs) This isn't what I asked for. Like, come on. Which is really, I mean, this is not what I planned. I just see so much of an invitation to the feminine in your corporate dropout story, Savannah. It's like, okay, I'll surrender on these terms and then the universe is like, nah, girl, that's not how we do this. Yeah. Like, I don't think you fully got it. So let me, let me make it clearer for you. Right. I mean, and it was kind of similar for me. I had up on my whiteboard, like behind the computer, there's a whiteboard where I have short-term, long-term goals. And it said, leave corporate March 2nd, 2022. That would have been my two-year anniversary at Google. And I have this like obsession with staying in every job for at least two years so that I don't look like, you know, I can't hold something down. Right. And then on the plane home from Maui, here's Jody. Hey, I know I'm the sign. Quit your job, girl. I'm like, well, this is like nine months earlier, but (laughs) I'm going to go with it. Because when you get the sign, you just you just got to do right. Yeah. It's also that feminine energy of allowing, which I guess is sort of the same as receiving too, but just not resisting and not worrying about the how and just going with it and having that trust. Has that been one of the biggest lessons for the two of you since you've stepped into this space of entrepreneurship, coaching, like dealing with all of our shit that comes up on that process? Or what's that been like? Like unbelievable. Like this has not gone the way that we thought it would. I mean, and does it ever? It has been, it has been such an invitation to surrender, to allowing, to leaning into intuition time and time again of like, what is just that one next step? What is the one next step that I'm willing to take in the direction of what I value and choose and doing that one thing and then saying, okay, cool. Now what's the next step? Because Amanda and I have, have made all sorts of plans and done launches and programs and things that just fucking crashed and burned. And that is the journey of being an entrepreneur Mm -hmm. is like throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks and just showing up again and again and again in service of your vision and your knowing. And it's just I mean, the people that we have become in this process of allowing and surrendering, like, that is the gift. Like, the gift is who we're becoming. Mm -hmm. It's been insane. I wanted to ask you about that. So, So tell me, like, who are the women that you are becoming as you're stepping away from this corporate world and beginning to just own and integrate your whole truths? I feel like the woman I am today and the woman I'm I'm becoming tomorrow and onward is way more self-assured and, and confident. That's so funny. I was like, and confident. I'm like, wait, can I say that? (laughs) Oh, that conditioning runs deep, right? Oh girl, does it ever. (laughs) Uh, But I also, I speak a lot more now than I ever did just in general, in my day-to-day life, I take up more space Like the woman before you now is a larger woman than she's ever been. And that's been one of the coolest things for me is to like reintroduce myself to myself and allow myself to really, yeah, to like want the things that I want and, and to have a preference and to, to speak up about it. And, and it feels like I'm, yeah, it feels like I'm meeting a new friend. Hmm. Oh, that's so beautiful. The episode that dropped yesterday, I actually, I talked about um, how I manifested my husband and how I became complete on my own by falling back in love with myself because I hate when people say, oh, my partner completes me. No, no. no. you got to be complete. And then you're a compliment. Or you make me so happy. No. No. Don't get me started. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> okay. We'll get mashing t-shirts, Lacey. Yeah. And then we'll just sit somewhere and go on a tangent about that. <laughs> I cannot wait. Well, we're going to do that in Hawaii next year, which we're going to talk about here in a second too. For those yes. of you listening, because you can't see us, I am wearing a shirt that my amazing brand photographer, Cameron, gave to me. And it said, there it goes, my last flying fuck. So I felt it very appropriate to wear it with you two queens. <laughs> All right, Savannah, tell us tell us about your journey to becoming like this woman who is just in her truth and authentically you. Well, first of all, it's a journey and I'm I'm still very much becoming the woman. Um like Amanda, I am taking up so much more space than I ever have. I'm using my voice more than I ever have. I just I'm so proud of the woman that I'm becoming. Uh I look back at you know, who I was when I was married. Um, I got divorced two years ago and, um, I was just constantly seeking acceptance and validation from my partner, from my work, from like everyone. And like, I've always been a a giver and a good listener and a good friend, but there has been because of my own, my deep wounds of abandonment and the things that I've been through. Um, I, I have just always sought permission and acceptance outside of myself. And since getting divorced, I have been on this really deep and profound journey of coming back home to myself and reclaiming my power and like, and really like learning who am I actually, what do I actually want? If there's nobody else in my, in the picture, like really who am I and who do I want to become? Um, and through this journey of corporate dropout and building our business, um, I have challenged so many stories and beliefs of what I thought I was. Like I, like I mentioned before, is like I had this story of like I'm flaky and inconsistent. I'm not smart enough. I'm not educated enough. I'm not capable enough. Um, and all of it is just bullshit. Like, like standing here today, I can truly say like I am. I'm one of the most capable people I know. I know that I can count on myself. I know my friends and family and partner can count on me. I know my clients can count on me. I know that what I bring to my relationships is so valuable. And I couldn't have stood in that confidence and that grounded knowing before. I couldn't receive a compliment before. Um, So I'm just becoming so resilient and so grounded um, through this journey. And I'm, yeah, I'm so grateful. Yeah. Grateful is really the, the main feeling that I have too. And I look back on everything. It's like, I mean, there's certainly, you two can agree with this. I'm sure certainly a lot of stress as an entrepreneur, right? Because it's Mm. up to you to bring home the bacon, right? Like if you don't make it happen by being the person that you're meant to be showing up as and serving, like it's not, it's not going to work, but how, what would you say in terms of like the mental health that you have now, despite the stress of entrepreneurship, do you just feel so much more at ease on a day to day or what's, what's that transformation been like from a mental health standpoint? I feel more robust now. Mm. I feel more robust now than I've ever been. Um, I think, you know, mental health work, self-development work, whatever you want to call it, the work, some people just call it the work. Um, it accumulates over time. And I've been doing the work since I was 19. So coming up on 20 years of the work. So I definitely feel a robustness in my mental health. And it's that robustness that allows me to feel at ease. That's such a beautiful word for it. Robust. Ah, And taking up space by being robust, Mm -hmm. right? What about you, Savannah? There's just so much more freedom and like living my life by design has been, yeah, living my life by design has been so freeing. I just remember being in corporate and just like longing to just like be able to go take a walk in the middle of the day if I wanted to, but not being able to, um, and feeling so trapped and so confined and living by somebody else's rules and schedule and not being able to take a day off if I needed to. And so though Amanda and I are equal partners and so I'm still accountable to someone, we are so we have gotten so good at designing what works for us in the way that we do our meetings every week um 
you know, we bring spirituality into our business. Like we pull cards and we have money dates and like, we just get so juicy. And it's, it's like being able to actually bring our full selves into our business versus before feeling like I could only bring a sliver of who I was to my work. Um, so even though it's stressful and it can be overwhelming and it can be unknown and scary, uh, there is just a fullness or a wholeness to the way that we show up that, yeah, that definitely, even though it feels overwhelming, there is a sense of ease and um, just aliveness. And it sounds like a lot of this is because you're just so in alignment doing what you know that you were meant to be here for rather than selling boxes and tape, which you know that God didn't create you for. I think it was an interview I did with Sandy and Wade where I said something like, I know that God didn't put me on the earth to sell cloud infrastructure. Like he just didn't. I mean, (laughs) there's so many wonderful things you can do with the income from whatever it is, but it's like, you know, we can earn an income from something that's a bit more aligned and in service to our gifts and others. So to wrap up, tell us a little bit about the retreats that you have. I will be at one of them. I've put my deposit down. I'm so so excited. excited, but... Tell, tell listeners and all of you hearing this, if you feel, if you listen to this and you feel like you're called, you need to come join us. That's going to be amazing. Okay. So with that, I'll let you two share more about it. Okay. Savannah, so you talk about Hawaii because you know Hawaii things. And okay. Okay. So <laughs> yes, uh, we have two, as of right now, two big, amazing week long retreats scheduled for 2022. Um, one in May in New York City that Amanda can tell you about. And then I'll tell you about our one in uh, on the big island of Hawaii in September um, that Alicia is joining us for. Um, yeah, I lived in Hawaii for almost three years. Um, and it is one of the most healing, sacred, awe-inspiring places I've ever been. Um, I've done a good amount of traveling and Hawaii just holds this really special place in my heart and my body and my soul. When I moved there, it literally felt like my soul's home. Like there was, there was just something different that I'd never accessed before, um, being there hiking and being in the ocean. And, um, so yeah, so our mutual friend, Megan, um, who's a spiritual guide, yoga instructor, breathwork practitioner, um, she approached Amanda and I and was like, I just have had this intuitive calling to reach out to you and see if you guys would want to co-host a retreat in Hawaii with me. And Amanda and I were like, uh, hell yes. (laughs) Um, so this, what a fun thing that you get to say yes to when you are your own boss. Yes. Yep. Was that a 250% yes? Oh yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, and it's been really beautiful creating this experience with Megan as we as we create these transfer, transformational experiences of of helping women to really embody their next level of of feminine leadership. It it's just been this like no brainer, beautiful co creation that we're just like, oh, and what about this? And what about this? And what about this? And it's like it's going to be so full of adventure, right? We're we're doing snorkeling with dolphins and the manta rays. Um, we're going hiking. Um, and then we're bringing in like Amanda's really powerful gifts of, you know, we're doing these art, she, Amanda's trained art therapist. So we bring in these really cool co-creative, um, art workshops. Um, I'm a photographer, as I mentioned, we're doing these really awesome, um, like empowered goddess photo shoots on the beach where we just get wild and dirty. And it's just, it's so fun. It's so at sunset, sunset beach, goddess photo shoots. <laughs> well, I saw Megan's photos and I was like, fuck yeah, like sign me up. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm so there. I need to be, I need to be in that space. Like that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah. 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 And then breath work, yoga. Like it's just, it's, of course, it's going to be a retreat in a sense of like disconnecting from your normal day to day and, you know, being in a beautiful location. Like just that does such a heavy lift. Um, but the, the structures we're creating for each day uh, to truly help you experience your full range of power in a way that you've probably never allowed yourself to 
is the part that feels the most exciting. And it's just this really, it's like deep and wide and full um, access to the parts of you that, that you've probably suppressed or maybe you're afraid of. Um, and, and yeah, this, this work is not for the, it's, it's not for everybody. And it's not just a yoga relax on the beach retreat. Like this is going to be healing. It's going to be intense. It's going to be fun. It's going to be connected. Um, but yeah, if this is calling you, it's, it's going to be pretty, pretty incredible. I'm yeah. so excited. And you guys were kind enough to offer a 250 voucher towards the retreat or coaching program with you. But if you heard about it through the podcast, yes. so tell, um, tell everyone, how can they go about redeeming that? That would be, yeah, come through us, reach out to us yeah. through and just mention, and, just mention, and, and I'll link in the show notes too. Yeah. 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 Just mention the corporate dropout podcast. And then before Hawaii, we're going to New York. So we've got a week in May that we're um, we're going to be in New York for like a we haven't really pinpointed a name, but the vibe of the New York retreat is like your confidence up level, sex in the city dream that you've always had. So we're we're partnering with another co facilitator, Tavia Sharp, and uh, she's all about the the fashion piece and getting you into your most authentic expression through your clothing and how you're carrying yourself. So this week in New York is your confidence up level, personal shopping sprees, personal shopping suites at like Nordstrom's and Zach's and Macy's or whatever it is that Tavia has got in the works. Um, Photo shoots, runway moments, full on fashion, everything. And all of the coaching that supports that and the workshops that will support that Because when we stretch into that next level of confidence, just the same as like leaving corporate and trying something new, you're stretching into a new level of confidence and your shit's going to come up. So we've orchestrated this way to stretch yourself and we're right there to hold you as you do. Yeah. And to help folks integrate back in as well yeah. before they go back to the the real 100%. world, so to speak. Yeah. Boy, I want to come to both of these. I got to find Do a way it. to make this happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You had me at shopping spree and private suite at North. Seriously. Really all I needed. <laughs> well, thank you yeah. so much for coming on the show. Uh, I'll link everything in the show notes, but where can people find you on social media, your website, all of that good stuff as well? Um, the easiest way, honestly, just through Instagram, cause you can connect with all of our things through Instagram. So it's, um, at embrace dot your dot wild underscore official. Um, and then obviously at the link in our bio, you can email us, you can join, um, our free Facebook community, the sisterhood, you can see all of our retreats and our programs. Um, but that's really at a really easy spot to find us. And we are the ones who manage that account. So if you message us, you get us. Yeah. Love it. Thank you both so much for coming on. The work you're doing is so important. I feel like once you as a woman awaken to the fact that this type of work exists and that you don't have to be living this overcapacity, burned out, so busy type of life and that you can come back in your feminine energy and be more at ease, it's like the whole world changes. So I am so glad that we got to reach people with this message today and help awaken and heal. And um, I just appreciate your time so much. And I'm excited for the mini episode that we're going to record right after this. So make sure y'all come back for that too. Thank you so much. Well, thank you all again. Thank you for listening. Until next time. Did you know we're in the midst of the great resignation? 4.3 million Americans left their jobs in August without seeking a new one. If you want to become a corporate dropout like me, but you need help creating an exit plan, I can help. Whether you need corporate exit coaching, business coaching, or you're seeking help to step into the best version of yourself, I'd love to connect with you. Listeners of the Corporate Dropout Podcast can book a complimentary discovery call with me. Visit alasiacitro.com slash dropout. That's A-L-E-S-S-I-A-C-I-T-R-O dot com slash dropout to book your free coaching call today. Thank you so much for listening to the show. If today's episode added value to your life in some way, please subscribe, leave a five-star review, and share it with someone who needs this. I'd love to connect with you on Instagram and hear how the show has inspired you. 
So tag me or slide into the DMs. Find me at Corporate Dropout Official or Alessia Citro. That's A-L-E-S-S-I-A-C-I-T-R-O and two underscores. Until next time, remember that you're a badass. Stay focused, stay hungry, and dare to drop out.